So, welcome to the lecture 18, that is a pest and disease management in organic farming. So, we discussed about the introduction for the pest and disease management, what type of pest and disease. So, this lecture we will be discussing about the managing the pest and disease or controlling the pest and disease through organic way or through mini or without using any synthetic uh, pesticides or the insecticides as you say. So, uh, so for this, so if you go for the uh, level of pest and disease management in organic farming, if you go for organic farming and you have to brand a product as a organic food that uh, in that case, so there should not be use of any synthetic pesticides and also synthetic uh, chemicals. So, there are three levels of management in case of the organic farming level A, level B and level C. Level A is a preventive method and level B is a physical and mechanical method of pests and disease control and level C is the where we can use the pesticides they are only bio pesticides those are allowed bio pesticides can be used. So, what we do for the organic farming usually you go for the level A first preventive followed by level B. If level A and level B of management they fail then you can go for the level C. So, what is level A? Level A is the first line of defense in managing uh, insects and disease is a system based approach that means uh, a say well designed say well designed and the healthy organic systems will naturally have fewer pest problem. So, that is known as a say level A preventive means we are going the organic way or organic systems. So, it is of course, it is obvious it should have the less pest and disease problem as we discussed in earlier classes also by using organic farming or by by doing or by doing organic farming or using the organic inputs the organic nutrients like the vermicompost or the any vermicompost or the bio fertilizers. So, um, there is a it, it is a slow release pattern unlike chemical fertilizers and also it provides the the holistic nutrients both macro and micronutrients uh, as and release is slow the, there is a secretion of many phytohormones, phytohormones in the plant body and they act as a resistance, the plant becomes highly uh, resistant against the insect pest and disease because they are less attracted by the insect pest and disease due to the secretion or the formation of the plant the phytohormones in plant body by using the uh, organic fertilizer or doing the organic way of farming. So, there is a uh, secondary metabolites, secondary metabolites the phytohormones they are secreted in the plant body and by, by which the it, uh, it is less attacked by pest and disease. That is what the preventive method the level A where you must follow all organic way by doing so organic the system is less healthy systems and has a fewer or the minimum pest problems. The system is designed to prevent pest and disease outbreak because by uh, going organic way by doing the organic farming. So, that is less prone, less infected by pest and disease. And level B, once the level A definitely we are following and level B we can take in addition to that we will take the physical and mechanical method of uh, uh, weeds, pest and disease control. And the second line of defense, uh, uh, defense is utilized if the practice of level A are not sufficient to control the weed, insects or the disease problem. So, that is what level B generally includes the mechanical and physical practice that are tradition in organic farming. So, after that we can if uh, label C this is a third line of defense is used if the level of uh, pest control required is not achieved after A and B. Then label C practice that includes the use of inputs such as biologicals, natural predators or the uh, botanical pesticides to control the pest and disease. So, we will discuss the uh, all this uh, level A, level B and level C of pest management in uh, organic farming. So, coming to level A, so the first one selection of adapted 
and resistant variety in case of organic farming usually we choose a variety which which are well adapted to local environments and this allows them to grow healthy and makes them stronger against any pest and diseases so if, if the if the area is prone to particular pest and disease so usually in case of organic farming we have to we have to choose a, a resistant variety to a particular pests and diseases like tomato that's a bfn that is resistant to botticillium fusarium and nematodes so uh, this varieties uh, those like like for example is given so say varieties which has resistant to many pests and diseases those varieties should be used in, in organic farming if the area is prevalent for particular pest and diseases then selection of clean seeds and planting materials no because uh, as a organic rule also so this seed should be free from weeds and pathogens and um, so that it uh, so it will be less uh, attacked with in the infected by the pest and diseases and this planting material was safe source from safe source and the, the material is collected the origin of the seeds seed source should not be con contaminated with disease or the pathogens or the weeds free from weeds and seeds uh, number 3 then there is a cultural practices that is a uh, as a preventive because you know by doing of organic organic farming the principles or the concepts by way of doing we uh, we keep the crop free from many pest and diseases so this is the principle has come as a crop rotation we discussed earlier because as uh, organic farming is a ecological production management okay that aims at, uh, at uh, crop uh, biodiversity biological cycle and soil biological activity as we discussed earlier so that's a crop rotations so in uh, crop rotation means crop of different families are taken up in rotations we don't grow same crops year after years or season after season the same field if we grow similar crops then the uh, the host and the pathogens they have a relation so they do build up so the so similar pests can attack the same crops now uh, if you are growing repeatedly in the same field so there is a change of crops one after another and this minimizes the risk of incidence of uh, a family specific disease cereal crops like wheat barley are taken up in rotations with other crops like legumes or um, pulses or oil seeds and in organic farming there is a rule that at least uh, one legume should be there in the cropping systems so that it can build the soil fertility and there is will uh, and the production level also can be maintained um, by including the legume uh, legume crops they help in fixing the atmospheric nitrogen the, that's a biological nitrogen fixation and um, this uh, breaks uh, by doing so uh, by going the rice and the cereals and legumes the disease cycles of the fusarium blight also that breaks so many type of disease which are common a particular uh, group of crops can be eliminated by rotating the crops with the different groups and intercropping also growing two or more crops simultaneously in the same field uh, that's called intercropping does this practice as a biodiversity and increase decreases the pest outbreak so that you can see here there's a maize and soybeans and the oats or the maize soybean oat so these are the intercropping systems so you can take uh, two or three crops together the same field in different rows and in that way we can maintain the biodiversity we can minimize the pests and disease pressure in the field and as you are using one leguminous crops in the inter intercropping systems so that is helpful in fixing the atmospheric nitrogen or the biological nitrogen fixations and that way you can minimize the special the nitrogen fertilizer requirements and we, of course we can maintain the uh, crop productions and the soil health also can be maintained by having so one leguminous crop and number 4 that's a use of balance nutrient management so balanced nutrition is really is very very essential because no uh, st steady growth makes a plant less vulnerable to uh, insect pest and disease attack so plants should be uh, hel uh, healthy and also uh, that comes have a defense mechanism and uh, too much fertilizations if excessive fertilizations that result in uh, uh, soil damage uh, to uh, to roots and paving the way for secondary infections so like excess nitrogen fertilizer make the plant succulents and hence more susceptible to attack of diseases and pests so um, if you are uh, in also you can see in many crops 
if you have the heavy dose heavy dose of urea especially the nitrogen fertilizers so the plant uh, becomes very succulent and the loses its strength actually and there is a lodging the crop falls down and so once the crop lodges in the soil so there is a this it it causes sites for the infection of the pest and disease moreover the economic parts it comes in contact with soils and there will be a loss in yield so that's why you should not use the excessive fertilizer balanced fertilization optimum fertilizations as much required for the crop only those depending upon the soil type and the crop needs the that will be discussing in the later section later sections how to calculate the fertilizer requirement and how to recommend fertilizers based on the need of the crop and balanced potassium supply makes the plant because potassium that is a creates the disease uh, defense mechanism in the disease resistance uh, in the plant parts so next supply of organic matter number 5 so increase the, the the having organic matter that increases the density and activity of microbes in soil thus decreasing the density activity of micropathogen soil so if you are adding the uh, organic manures in the soil the soil is rich in uh, uh, organic carbon uh, that means there is a more of more my the beneficial microbes microorganisms if the, their population increases so the the population of the pathogens is reduced automatically so that way we can prevent the pathogens in the soils by having more and more organic manures and this uh, of course organic manures that's other advantages that stabilizes soil structure you know this rich in humus that that increases the buffering capacity of the soils that increases water holding capacity of soils and also that strength, strengthen the plants defense mechanism by secretion of the certain substances as you, as you, uh, so organic compounds or the increasing the uh, phy phytohormones creation in the plant body that causes the defense mechanism so having organic matter in the soil, in the soil that improves the soil physical properties chemical properties biological properties or uh, there is a more microbial population so there is automatically there is a less number of the the pathogens in the soil the number 6 is the application of uh, suitable soil cultivation methods usually that uh, the cultivation technique uh, the facilities the, for that for the, the tillage operations so that helps in decomposition of infected plant parts and regulates weeds which serves as the host for the pests and diseases and protects the beneficial soil microflora so that should be proper tillage so that the weed growth is checked and it also supports the growth of the beneficial microorganisms proper water management in fact i can say the uh, the soil the suitable soil cultivation also in the nursery bed as you discussed earlier class nursery bed if nursery bed created such way that that uh, that's also helpful for the growth of the beneficial microbes if once the population of beneficial microbes increases so we can minimize that can minimize the population of the harmful uh, in uh, harmful microbes proper water management means avoid water logging except rice rice crops does not require standing water saturation enough other crops they don't re require the heavy water so water logging should be avoided so that cause uh, ambient condition for different pest and diseases uh, avoid wa water on the foliage also leaves because water borne diseases spread with the droplets and fungal diseases germinate in water so uh, the the foliage uh, droplets should be uh, and the um, water in the foliage should be avoided and also water logging in the field should be avoided you can feel the the keep the field airy uh, then conservation and promotion of natural enemies because providing an ideal habitat uh, for the growth and reproduction of uh, natural enemies by doing organic farming and avoiding the products that may harm the natural uh, enemies so uh, that means the growing of some plants that attract ladybugs ladybugs is a uh, beneficial insects uh, and other uh, natural predators that will help to reduce population of plant pests so by doing so, uh, doing so by increasing the population of the uh, natural predators or uh, um, uh, releasing the natural predators in the field they can kill the harmful microorganisms likewise trichoderma viridi also that also release in the field so they can they can destroy or they can kill many harmful pathogens then selection of uh, optimum planting time and spacing so uh, see the for a better yield so better productions and good, good quality productions planting time and the spacing spacing crop geometry 
is very very important. The crops should be planted at the optimum periods so that it can avoid many pest and disease attack at certain growth stages that is called critical growth stages. So, this uh, balloon stage could be uh, could, should not coincide with the period of uh, highest pest density thus optimal planting time should be chosen. So, uh, so, having optimal planting time the crop growth is better and finally, you can get a good productions good harvest with less insect pest and disease. And optimum spacing reduces the spread spacing means the plant to plant spacing or the row to row spacing in a crop geometry and that provides a good aeration for the foliage and that, that uh, uh, reduces the pathogen development as you say uh, usually when you go for the other uh, uh, field uh, planting operations we must leave some space at least uh, uh, after one, one and one uh, half meters uh, 50 centimeters space should be left vacant. So, this helps having the, le the vacant row or the empty row that uh, because farmers usually do not uh, um, like do not want to spare their lands to make the lands empty land the empty because you no know, there is advantage if you make the land empty. So, the crop gets proper aerations one there is a proper aerations it helps in increasing the yield. So, the, the land where uh, there is no crop the yield loss from that land is compensated the yield gain from the crop land because of the better aerations less insect pest and disease attack and also that have a um, good effect as say that uh, favorably influence the yield of the crops. So, having the proper spacing and maintenance of air space and the buffer rows after, after uh, maybe 1.5 meter that helps in the uh, protecting the crop from many pest and disease and also yield improvement. Then use of proper sanitation measures that means, the uh, remove infected plant parts the parts which are infected immediately should be removed either the leaves and fruits. So, so, otherwise it spreads from one, one part to another parts from one plant to another plant also from one field to other field too. Uh, and the second they discard the infected plant residue after harvest like the in example you can say apple and the pear growers remove branches infected with the fire bright. So, this, this the, the strike, the strikes are removed from the orchard and burned to kill the bacteria that cause the fire bright. So, these infected plant parts should be noticed and immediately they should be removed and the burnt to avoid any spread of this insect pest or disease. Similarly, mushroom growers they pasteurize the bedding materials. So, that to kill the um, fungi uh, that would compete with the mushroom crop. So, this, this type of the sanitations that should be uh, maintained uh, while we are going for the organic farming. Then comes the cover crops 11 cover crops means some cover crops like Sudan grass, rapeseed, mustard are effective at suppressing nematodes. If you go for the cover, cover crops not only suppressing nematodes those also close growing cover crops like your chickpea you can say or the peanuts. So, they can they can control the weeds also they do not allow the weed, weed growth. And same for the trap crops also there are certain trap crops they do attract insect towards themselves. So, they create they keep the main crop free from insect pest and disease. So, these are the small planting uh, some planting of crop uh, crop variety intend to draw a particular pest away from the main crop. For example, alpha alpha planted in strips uh, the between the cotton cotton that attract uh, ligus bugs away from the cotton crop. So, uh, also the trap crop must be destroyed to kill the pest that have been attracted to them. So, trap crops either in a, in a sequence after after few after a particular rows you can use trap crop or the boundary area also that can be used to have a trap crop. So, that they can attract the harmful insect pest or the pathogens towards the trap crop. So, main crop is protected. Marigold is also used as a trap crop they can they just attract the many insect pest from the main crop and the main. So, now these trap crops after can be destroyed. So, that the the insect pest should not spread to other area. So, these are the label B of uh, label B management practices. So, if you go for the uh, label, uh, label A then label B that is a physical methods or the chemical method label E label A is a preventive because by doing organic farming we do follow the label A methods. If you are really for the following the organic farming the standard practices of organic farming. So, label A is automatically followed either the crop rotations, intercroppings, having different crops in the leg legume crops in the systems. Uh, so, um, 
So these are, these are the things are the use of organic manures. So they are usually covered in the label A. So label A, uh, so label B, uh, yeah, uh, just say physical methods or you can say mechanical methods that is followed for the management mulching. Mulching either you can go for the organic mulching or plastic mulching. So by mulch, doing so mulching also that minimizes the weed growth, that suppress weed growth and also that does not bring the direct the, the, the crops in direct contact with the soil, soil, soil contacts. So that also minimizes the, the pest and disease problem. Mulching can be either can for the organic mulch and plastic mulch. So organic mulch also that is a um, advantage having they are the um, nutrients that make the soil more fertile. Then uh, canopy management. Canopy management means by training and the pruning trees. So uh, especially for the orchard crops, if there is a dense canopy, so those crops, those tree, orchard trees, they are ma mainly affected by the um, infested by pest and disease. Because uh, having the dense trees, dense, uh, dense canopy, so it does not allow the uh, sunlight to enter into the um, ground uh, and also there is a you know, poor area to have a air flow, better air flow and better uh, solar radiations. In that case, the regular uh, trimming or the pruning of the trees or trimming the required so that increases the air flow and that can minimize the outbreak of any diseases. So, there is a viticulturist practice a leaf removals to control uh, botrytis bunch of uh, uh, root, uh, um, rot of grapes. So, so, by doing so training and the pruning of the trees, we can, we can make also sanitation also as you discussed sanitation that is required. One part of the organic farm we can say we can do that one regularly so that the, uh, the outbreak of the pest and disease can be minimized. Solarizations, this is also by the mulching, the covering soil with the plastic during summer allow the soil to get hot enough to kill many pathogens. In that process also some of the uh, beneficial uh, pathogens may be killed, but uh, if there is a soil, the soil has, uh, um, it is, uh, has a poor, uh, poor in, in, in terms of the pathogens, so we can have the plastics, usually we use the black plastic uh, while cropping also, black plastic uh, that uh, does not allow the weed growth and also it can kill many uh, pathogenic organism. Uh, then uh, mass trapping, so that means that uh, mass trapping of insects uh, can use up light trap. Light trap uh, used to uh, catch moths like army worm, caught worms, stem borers and other night flying insects. So, these are the physical methods uh, they achieve the light traps. So, light traps can be installed in the field so that it can attract the insect pest those are the uh, night flying insects it can fall under this and this can be uh, controlled. And the yellow stick, sticky trap, that means in yellow sticky trap, so on a board, uh, yellow boards, uh, we can use the, uh, that can control this uh, like the white flies, aphids and leaf mining flies, those can be attracted to the yellow sticky traps. See yellow color as also many insects, even beneficial ones, so it, it is should be used only when needed. The, what the yellow stick trap, we are using the motor oil or the Trans transparent uh, car grease, car grease also that can be used for the uh, as a stick uh, for the stick uh, in yellow, 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 yellow card. And this is uh, placed around 10 centimeter above the crop foliage. And the number of sticky traps can be 2 to 5 sticky traps per 500 meter square field area. So, uh, these are uh, 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 used uh, especially by the, by the organic farmers, you can use these ones so that the so, there are different methods you can do parallelly either you, can, you, you are going for the cultural practices, the preventive method anyway you are following going organic farming and the physical and mechanical methods should be followed parallelly. So, that uh, because whatever is not controlled by the preventive methods uh, level A, those can be controlled by the level B. So, uh, like using this uh, uh, different uh, um, plastics mulching as you discussed plastic mulching or by the orga, um, organic mulchings and using the traps, this light traps or the yellow sticky traps. So, they can attract insects and insects can be killed either, either the light insect can be stick there. So, those can, the crop can be protected from the insect pest. The other trap is pheromone trap also. Pheromone trap uh, because this is also used uh, extensively uh, where the uh, sex form of pheromones from the because male, uh, the male insects comes attracted to the uh, this uh, this uh, compounds that say powder the powder that is kept inside this pheromone trap that came attracted. Sometimes what happens uh, this uh, powder becomes uh, because they, they sticks to the uh, male insects 
and also other male insects they also can become attracted in that way male insect is to follow the male insect. So, uh, it makes that uh, uh, instead of following the female insect that attracted towards also male insect that way it can minimize the mating also mating disruption occurs it can minimize uh, insect pest and disease pressure. So, this type of uh, uh, either the light trap, yellow sticky trap or the pheromon trap this can be uh, used uh, because, because these are not very expensive also be, very, uh, not expensive the farmers can afford this one they can be used in the field uh, so that we can control the insect pest. The other one that is the fruit bagging. So, fruit bagging uh, that is a prevents the fruit flies from laying eggs on the fruits like the fruit flies as you see, as you see in the, the mango that is also infected by the fruit flies and they make the damage. So, by putting the aerated the perforated bags are there, bags are there. so of course, the tedious job. So, we have to, uh, to do that one especially orchard crops. So, this can be uh, bagging should done. So, they can avoid the direct uh, attack from the fruits and this, uh, this can also in case of the many crops like your melons or the bitter goods, mango or the guava or the star fruits. Uh, and of course, this uh, fruit bagging that can be used for this uh, uh, banana, banana bonds also that is also uh, attacked by many pests and diseases. So, uh, this fruit bagging can be used for banana crops. So, these are the uh, label A and the label B management practices. So, uh, as you discussed for this if you go for organic farming by doing uh, the way of organic we, we want to minimize or no use of uh, pesticide synthetic pesticides or synthetic fertilizers in the field by following the label A that means by going the organic way of management as you discuss the principles and practices of organic farming by doing that one we are minimizing the many pest and disease populations. So, if you give, follow the organic cultural methods crop rotations crop cycles and use of legume, legume crops and having the proper bed as you discussing the broad bed and furrow making the broad bed once you enhance the growth because uh, crop growth is a robust uh, increase the enhance the crop growth that increase the defense mechanism and having the organic manures in the field that increases the population of the beneficial organisms and so that the, the food materials for the pathogens becomes limited and there is a automatic less population of the patho pathogens in the field and by doing the organic wave management. So, there is a phytohormones the very very important phytohormones or secondary metabolites that is uh, formation in the plant body that protect the plant from uh, attack of many uh, from the from the many uh, pests and diseases. And uh, in addition to that uh, water management also we are discussing water management do not make a over, over flooding economy because water is going to limited in future. So, minimum water more drop per drop. So, um, the, uh, doing different techniques are used now the, the uh, minimum water as the, the economic water, uh, water management using drip irrigation, sprinkler irrigations or the uh, alternate uh, furrow irrigation. So, that the water, water uh, use can be minimized at the same time crop does not suffer except rice even if rice does not require standing water. Rice only the saturation conditions can be maintained for rice crop. Uh, uh, but uh, in, uh, if you grow for rice for the direct seeding, so there is a problem direct seeding of the rice we have, what we have seen from our experimental observations direct seeding rice also that is severely prone to many pest and diseases as compared to the uh, uh, transplanted rice because the transplanted rice become very healthy they gets the uh, nutrient availability is higher in case of the transplanting because the puddle conditions and the, as the soil is a puddle and the anaerobic conditions most of the nutrients are available in case of puddle conditions and yield is also higher rice yield in case of the transplanted paddy it is around uh, 15 to 20 percent higher as compared to direct seeding. And the direct seeding is uh, as a, the growth is uh, poorer as compared to transplanted conditions and the dry also in that case also the crop is uh, highly vulnerable to uh, some pest and diseases. And this is a water management as you are discussing. So, uh, similarly uh, if you follow the that that is I mean to say with organic management practices following exactly the low external input technology as we have discussed in the uh, previous classes starting from the land preparations 
and the nutrient management. That means we are using only on farm inputs, avoid use of any of farm inputs or synthetic synthetic uh, materials in the in the in the field. In that way, doing so organics is a, by the natural way of uh, doing uh, the organic farming. That way, the crop uh, becomes less influenced. There is less. Insect pest and disease populations. We have seen from our the continuous organic farming, long term organic farming, the crop we crop is not uh, uh, infested by any pest and disease. Only we are so you, you can you can you can spray regularly the um, bio pesticides like your neem oils or the mixture of the um, vermi the vermi wash with the water with the water they can take care of the pest and disease. So that is the I say by following organic practice we can minimize many. Pest and disease populations. So, in addition to that, we can follow the level B, that is the physical or the mechanical methods. So, so whatever the the um, pest and disease are there, also many can be controlled by doing so. Either you can have the traps, different traps are there, light traps or the uh, sticky traps, or this is the your the sex ferment uh, uh, ferment traps. This can be used for collecting. For sometimes we use ferment trap also monitoring the Population of the insects in the crop field, and uh, this uh, physical method, chemical, mechanical method, they can control also many insect pest diseases. So this is how we have to uh, manage the pest and diseases in farming, so that we don't want to sacrifice the yield of the crop. We don't want to lose the yield of the crops. So this is about the label A and label B management. We will continue label C. That means how we can use the natural predators or the uh, the bio agents. Or the bio pesticides can be used regularly in the crop field so that we can have a complete control of the pest and diseases in organic farming. We should not depend on the uh, synthetic pesticides for uh, protecting our crops. By doing so, we can by doing organic way, we can also protect the crops. We can have the similar yield levels and by we can have a better food or the healthy foods. With this, I thank thank you all.